Oh, great cars, great cars. Holy cow, where did you guys come from? Yes, it's welcome to another edition of the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. And I just can't get enough of this guy. He's a brilliant fisherman. Pretty good looking too, I know quite well actually. Now, we're out on the beach, and I do like a bit of beach fishing now and then, I must admit, it breaks up all the other different types of sport, you know, boat, freshwater, fly fishing. But, secret rig, secret rig guys. It's called the Wessex Rig. It's so old, it's archaic, it's prehistoric, it's probably, well, it's most definitely older than I am. No, it can't be that old, can it? Anyway, it's called the Wessex Rig. I'll tell you a little bit more about it. First, switch this guy off. He can get a bit boring at times. Okay, now the Wessex Rig is pretty ancient rig. It's traditional. A lot of guys today don't even know, in fact, it's a really good average fish catcher and especially good one for beginners to use. And I'll tell you where I think that it was actually sort of founded, where it, uh, it found its sort of base, was down on the Southern Hampshire and the, mostly the Dorset coastline. And it was used sort of off of jet, jetties and piers and general shoreline. Off of, off, it was used as a sort of a double-edged sword, if that makes sense, because the rig itself is pretty basic and all good fishing rigs are basic. So here at the top, right, you've got your clip, it comes down four or five inches, say six inches top, and then you have a snood. Off of the snood, it's very, very short. It's only four inches, short snood, tied, fixed. Then there's 18 inches drop. On the bottom of that is a swivel, two beads, a lead weight slides up and down. So you can also, on the other side of that, put a running ledger of another 18 inches, right? So it's 18 inches down here, 18 inches there. So when you swing the loop up, it doesn't touch, it doesn't tangle, shouldn't tangle anyway. But more important, what it does is it gives you a fixed hook on a short four inch snood, a fixed hook pattern onto there, so static, it nails it down. Because don't forget, with a lead off a beach, the lead's here, you tighten up, you, you think it's fishing this way, no, it's laying on the seabed, so it's laying flat on there, on the seabed, but it's fixed and tight, so you've got that little four inch short snood. And then below that, below the weight, which is a running ledger weight, you've got that 18 inches. Now that can move around. So you can fish a big bait on the bottom for taking fish on the running ledger, and you can fish a smaller hook at the top. It's a brilliant little rig of Wessex, but I'd say it really is historically, it's a, it's a sort of Dorset rig really, that's what I say it is. Now let me tie one for you, and hopefully you'll be able to see what it's like. Righty ho guys, let's show you. Now I've, I've pre-tied some of these up, Otherwise you usually sit there for like 15 minutes watching me tie knots, and I'm sure most of you know how to tie knots. Fishing rod's here. I know, just imagine there's a fishing rod. It's not a real one, it's a pretend one. Fishing rod's here, from the rod top you come down, you've got your shock leader on there, I hope, whether you use a multiplier or you use a fixed ball, you want a shock leader. Anything from 30 to 50 pounds, depending whether you're doing a pendulum cast, I'm not doing a pendulum cast. Um, I've probably got about 40 on my, on my outfits. So, thread it through the rings, you're all slotted up here. You can put a clip, a bead and a clip on the end, like a link, link swivel, so you can snap to a loop. So here's the start of the Wessex rig, right? I'm, I've made this one out of 50 pound, in case I, you know, want to do pendulum casting, which I don't, but I just feel safe for using 50. This is 50 Andy Premium. I'm not selling it, I'm just telling you what I'm using. Okay, so I've made this one a touch longer than the Wessex. So I've got what's called a surgeon's loop here. That's a double overhand loop, basically. So the rod comes down like this from the rod top. They just snap, sort of, you thread it up and you've got the rigs ready tied, clip it on. So there we're gonna start from there. I've got here the blood loop and I've got the short four to six inch drop. You can make it really as short as you want, but you know, what I've done, I have done here is to make that, if you can see that there, to make that stand off from the main line, I've made actually quite a long loop there. Normally you can have a short loop, but I've tried to make it a bit bigger. So I've made a long loop. So even with, and I've used a bit of yellow line there, 20 pound test, even with a sort of four or five inch snood length, I've probably actually in theory got six inches there. But I've allowed for the drop, because I did say 18 inches for the Wessex rig. Well, hang on, I've just made a very slightly longer loop. So I might have six inches, I don't want it to tangle, I've probably gone to two feet. So there's a loop, there's my snood, it's something like a one, 
one on 100 hook fine wire Aberdeen. I'll give you a tip on that in a minute. Right the way down, and I come to the swivel. Now, the, what I've done is I've put a link or snap swivel on here. On the original Wessex rig, they used to tie it, they didn't use to pre tie it very much, put the lead on, tie it on. Ah, but then every time you want to change leads, weights from a plane to a grip, you've got to cut it, slide the lid off, slide it back on. So I thought, no, better way of doing this, links with all. So I've got the two beads there either side, the same as the Wessex rig use. And then from the 50, because don't forget, anything that supports a lead, you've got to have a shock leader for. So down to there, I've got the 50. I've then got the barrel swivel, and I've there got my 18 inches, and that is 18 inches, down to another small hooks. I'm only using small hooks on this because I want to show you, but you can, or I would generally say, especially through the summer months, use a bigger hook. So you can have a big bait on the bottom, running ledger, because that's what that does. It's going to run, I'll show you in a second and a small bait on the top snoop. The idea of the Wessex rig, small bait, big bait. But just to show it to you, hopefully if we get down on the beach sometime, grab two or three hours, see if we can actually catch something on it, you'll be more impressed. So, there's my snap swivel. I'm gonna be using bigger tides coming. There's no wind, a bigger tide, probably need a bigger lead. I'll probably end up down Hayden Island somewhere struggling to catch anything at all. I just snap on my grips there, and I've got a vain one for flighting the lead once I made it myself. And it's much better, this, I think, is just having a, the link swivel on there because you can change leads a lot more easier than you can if you have to untie it and then retie the whole lot again, you know, sliding a lead up. Oh, man, what a drag, especially cold fingers in a winter's night. So there you go. I'll just show you that lead there. You can see that. It's sliding up and down. So I've got, my, I've got the same Wessex-style running lead, but it comes up against the bead at the bottom. Also got the bead on the other end here and what you can do and i've done it with some of the others where it butts up against the knot i know the lead shock is being taken by the by the bead there but i also like putting a bit of valve rubber there sometimes just sort of a bit of spring against the knot so there you have the wessex rig and again 18 inches that's your running ledger as you can see it is running slides up and down there like that then you've got in this case instead of the 18 i've got 24 inches up to my single dropper there, you can just see hanging off with a small hook. Now here's a little tip I learned from a beach matchman. And you know what, it really makes sense. Okay, now I was doing an interview with Tony Kerridge from Tony's Tackle. And all the time I was filming, I was I kept getting hooks nicked in my tri camera tripod all the time and I couldn't understand. I thought, why, why they keep snagging me all the time? And then Tony gave us a tip that if you just get a pair of pliers on a straight parallel point to shank hook and just just ease it just bend it just very slightly and you can see that so it's it's coming off at a kink there at a slight angle it will nearly always ouch he says stupidly sticking it in his hand it will nearly always catch on a piece of base look look watch it if you can see that i've got the hook laying flat i haven't pushed the point in but i'm just going to pull it along and look at that snagging you can actually see you can see that snagging. I'm going to do it from a side for you just so you can get an idea. Obviously, if you can lay it the other way, hook point is up, but then you can look at it. That, well, the hook point's up. If the, if the fish comes along and nibbles it, that's ready to stick straight in the top lip. But you can see you've got a good 50% chance of hooking just here. I've laid it flat. I'm just going to draw it across the base of my pool table and immediately, look, it doesn't, go, it doesn't even go millimetres. It goes about three mil and bang, hook up. So there's a tip for you, look at that. Can't wait to try this, this is the first time I've used this, but uh, I've used offset hooks before, but it's just gotta be slightly offset if you can see that there, just very slightly offset. Obviously sharp hooks anyway. And what I've also got, it's a totally awesome fishing tip, is a little fluoro bead. Now these are the ones that uh, you can shine lights on, they glow in the, in, in the dark. And I just have a feeling they might be, I've used them before out in the boat for place, they work really well. We just try them off the beach as well. And you know, it, it's just one of those bonus things I think it might, uh, might make the difference. So that's a Wessex rig. You can obviously use this with a running ledger as well, but I do feel rather than slide the lead on the lines, better to have a little link swivel like that, pop it off, and then you can put on whatever you want, can't you? You can put a bomb on, you can put a fixed wire. There you go, that's a bit big the wire on that one. But you can use what you want. 
let's get down the beach. Let's see if we can do anything. Let's see if we can make this rig work and at least catch one fish to show you, please. Hang on guys, don't go down the beach yet, basically, because I've got all the tackle. I forgot to tell you this. You can put those rigs into tackle boxes. They tangle up, they get mixed up, it's a bit of a pain, and it's a bit of a pain. But it is dead handy if you work like the matchmen do, and you pre-tie all your rigs at home. That way you get fishing straight away. If you snag up and you break off, you can peel another rig out, off you go. So instead of using boxes, how about using really expensive pieces of insulation pipe that goes around copper piping. So cheap, cheap as chips as they say. No fish to go with it, just as cheap as chips. But it's split down the middle and that's dead handy. And what you do is you put the loop between the split first, just push it through the split, just in there. And then you just uncoil it all. Oh man, oh, so, so easy. Uncoil it all, you come to the end, your hooks push into this Foam, there's the other hook coming out. I get to the end and where it's pushed in the split there. Oopsie, pops out lovely like that, doesn't it? There's the rig. All you've got to do, because it will have line memory because it's been around a small diameter coil, is just pull those out. Don't pull the hook in your fingers. Stroke out the nylon with a bit of heat and there you go. It's laying nice and straight. And of course you could do other rigs. That's what I might say, some of my small fish ones are on here. We put my big fish stuff on here. Big fish, I wish. Big diameter, so less memory coil. Same thing, look, there's the split. There's the split. You can buy me a metre length for a couple of quid or something like that. You get about five or six out of that, so you can put, God knows how many, how many rigs I've got on that one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And I've got a dozen rigs, pre-tied Wessex rigs, all tied up on there, all ready to go. And here's some big fish stuff, ready for when the bass start coming in, drawn back rays, that sort of thing and put it in the split, away you go. So a little tip there, now, we really can start to load the car up, grab the bait, and hit the beach. Let's get going, guys. Don't forget to take the rigs, Graham, please. Right, we're down on the beach, Hayden Island, flat car, spoke to a couple of guys on the phone, it's terrible, it's flat, they're catching nothing. Will the Wessex rig, come good and here it is there's my loop there's my short snood four inches two inch loop there hangs away nice look nice and stiff like that then I come down on my rest of what you call my shock leader there is a plane bomb slides up and down and there's my 18 inches to hook and bead we are done we are ready I've done enough tackle talk let's hit the beach Okay, so now what I do, the idea of the Wessex is to fish a small worm on this top hook here. So I'm going to put a small ragworm on there. And I'm not going through the, the, the actual the mouth. I'm coming about half inch back. You can see that. Because then that head can still, you know, wriggle around and might entice something. It's not dark yet. Always thread it up the shank of the hook. Pop it over the eye and then leave little bit of tail, now you can just see that, look, you just see that moving there. Now in daylight conditions and dusks, that's enough to switch a fish on. And a little bit of movement at the top. But on the bottom one, that was the fixed pattern. So on this piece, the trace at the bottom, which is the running ledger, generally bigger hook, bigger bait, say squid, slice of mackerel, something really chunky. But being winter, hard, well, they tell me it's impossible. I'm still going to use a big old mother of a ragworm. And get that, I'm going to show you there, thready around. So I was still using the principle of big bait on the bottom, small bait on the top. So you're covering both options and it makes, you know, a good, a good rig, a good rig to use. Oh man, tell me that's not eatable, look at it. It's wiggling at both ends. The next thing to do is add water. Now, getting dust. The tide is still running here. I mean, it's only a neat tide. It's very small. It's like the worst tide you can get. But I'm still going to go with a grip. 
one of these little grip leads that break out like that with the wires that break loose. You can buy moulds for these and that's the veined one. It's supposed to be better for flighting through the air. And you can tension these up if you squeeze those two noses together there, two wires over the nose, then when they notch in there, they're tighter. And you can also close those wires down a little bit. So they are neat ties, but I don't want, for fishing more than one rod, I don't really want the leads rolling into each other. Let's get it out there. Right, now you, you don't need to be a long distance caster. I'm not a long distance caster. I did cast once about 940 yards. No, it's true, but I wasn't attached to it. Big crack off. But fixed ball wheels all I use. I do use multipliers sometimes. But do you know what? Because we only fish short sessions because of work, get down there, get it out there. I don't want a bird's nest. Get yourself a nice cheap fixed ball. Fill it up with, say, 15 pound main line. 40, 50 pound shock leader, away you go, get it out, no tangles, it's bait in the water that catches the fish. I'm going to get this about probably 80 yards out, and that's going to be enough. It's going to be enough to have a bank anyway. One tip is, as you load the rod up with your right hand, pull down with the left, to get a good flex in that tip. Just notify that shipping out there that there might be a dangerous object coming their way. Now, I'm so, I'm so not confident because everybody's told me there's absolutely nothing swimming on this beach at all. But Mike's down here, our film editor from the Totally Awesome Fishing Show, and his girlfriend Emmy, so they're going to get the honours of winding anything in, including my rods. And last time we went pike fishing with Mike, we got very lucky at the last minute. So, we need some luck. Let's get this up in the tripod. And I'm hoping, hoping, you know, when it gets really dark, we might actually have a shot at something out there. Tell me there's nothing here, but... Uh, we've, got, we've got plenty of baits and plenty of rods and that Wessex rig, it really is there to pick up either small fish or big fish, the option. I can see another guy, I think well, I thought we were the only ones down here, but there's one guy right down on the sandbar, sort of where I wanted to get on the point on the other side of the bar, and I reckon when that tide does flood, he's in a good spot for some schooly bass there. A bit early, but he's plumb on the spot there. As you can see, the beach is totally empty, except one other diehard further up. I should have listened to all the advice from the other anglers. There were loads having blanks, but hey, what do you do? I'm certainly not catching anything back inland. Well, except maybe norovirus. Dusk, however, always brings renewed enthusiasm, as that's when the shore fishing should get better. And what about that tide rip? In summer, with a big surf pounding in, I can see a fresh sandal could easily be intercepted there by a bass. Not tonight, though. The sea is definitely too flat. It's time to get the old anchor lamp set up. I put it on a pole that I've made up, which is far too heavy. It's a wishbone at the top, but it does do the job. It's like a shepherd's crook. I know many today just use a headlamp, but I still prefer that friendly color spreading out from 350 candle power pressure lamps. Here at Totally Awesome, we don't normally get time to have anything to eat or drink. We're going to make use of it now. What a night, what a night. I know it's grim, I know it looks flat, but you never really know. Is there a place, a flounder, a whitey, a dab, out there with our name on? You know what the saying is, guys. You've got to be in it to win it. 
There's something on here, but only small. The tide's falling out. I don't know if we've got a tsunami coming. I think we're going to go out so far. Oh, and the fish as well. Oh my God, what a fish. What a fish. <laughs> does the Wessex rig work? It does. And I did say, small hook at the top to pick up the small fish. <laughs> I mean, that is, do you know what? That's a first class postage stamp. I think I'm going to stick that on a letter and send it to somebody in France, see if it'll make air now. Look at the size of that, it's a cutie. But I tell you what, at least it shows you, small hook, nailed down tight on the dropper rig. What is it, a small dab, small flounder, small dab, I think it is like that. It is Weensy Burger, look at it. What a little, oh, he fell off the hook, that was lucky. Do you know what, I'm not sure, that isn't the smallest flatfish I've ever caught in my life. But it works, the Wessex rig has been a success. Let's put this little chappy back. can't dispute with a scene like this that just being out on the beach with a winter sunset is still pretty awe-inspiring. And that's why I go, even if the fishing is pretty tough. Well guys, as you can see, it's dark now, but one of our tips, one of our Totally Awesome Fishing Tips is, Showing him when our beginner's fishing tips to beach fishing is put a bit of silver foil around the back of the lamp. If you use lamps, and I like using lamps, very gingerly and carefully, if you thread that round, you can shut off the back half of the light. And that way, that's perfect. Immediately, I can see more. He says, burning his fingers carefully. Just like that, just, just, just fold it loosely. And then you see I'm behind and those rod tops get lit up. As long as you're looking from behind it, I can now turn out my headlamp and my pupils aren't getting smaller by looking at the bright light this side. Now I can just look over on the rod tops, brilliant. And I can see when there's a bite, which there's not. And over on the left here, we have a battery of rods as well. And again, because I just painted them with white paint, that's all I've used, nothing fluorescent, nothing fancy, no isotopes, anything like that. White paint, straight out of the garage. And as you can see, they are totally motionless. Ah, and of course, what you do when you're not getting bites and everybody's told you you're not going to catch any fish, bring some wood with you, no nails in it, light yourself a beach fire. Ah, man, you can cook on it, you can put toast on it. You can even toast Mike's girlfriend here who's cooking. Here are, here, just to the side, nice and toasty and warm. Trust me, it's cold out there. But what you do, we've got a steel plate underneath this, and that's the way you do it on the beach. Steel plate, wood on top, and then when it burns out, you take your steel plate away when it's cool. Oh, and I'll tell you what, this is pretty toasty. Now, if you bring wood, I've taken the trouble to take all nails out of this wood, all staples out of this wood. It's just straight wood, so it goes down to ash. Takes a bit of work to do it, but boy is it worth it. Another thing to look out for, exploding stones for those who haven't had it. And when this gets hot, they will explode. And it wakes you up. Brilliant. Well guys, it's not a big one, but it's fish number two on the Wessex rig. I've walked so far out, I've almost reached the Isle of Wight. We were expecting neat tides today, uh, it turns out they're actually spring tides. We've got a big trench that we need to hop over to get the cast to get the bait out now. But the Wessex rig works. We're going to give it a few more hours, try and get the baits out there a bit further, wait for the tide to start coming back in, and hopefully get some bigger ones or a different species. But still, it's a bit. <laughs> <laughs> 